So on gigabit 104, show run. At the moment, we don't have any configuration on that port. Interface gigabit 104. Once again, you have to make the port an access port before you enable port security. So switch port mode access, switch port port security, switch port MAC address. And we need to specify the MAC address manually here. So I'm going to specify it as this MAC address. I know that because that is the MAC address configured on this PC. We can see that again by using ipconfig slash all. That is the MAC address of PC5. So what have we done? We've configured this port with port security and we've manually configured this MAC address per these instructions. But notice what we've been told to do is drop other traffic and send a log messages when a violation occurs. By default, that port will be shut down when a violation occurs. So I need to change that to say violation. We have three options, protect, restrict, and shut down. The one that we want to use is restrict. On Cisco's website, we told the differences. Protect drops packets with unknown source MAC addresses until you remove a sufficient number of secure MAC addresses to drop below the maximum value. Restrict does something very similar, but also causes the security violation counter to increment, so you can get a logging of what's taken place. Shutdown changes the port to error disabled mode or error disabled state and sends a SNMP trap notification. Notice this is different to a simple shutdown of the port. The port is error disabled. So it will be shut down, but it's not simply an administratively shut down port. So show run, gigabit 104. We've configured it for port security, violation restrict. MAC address is this. So show port security. We can see restrict here. We can see that one MAC address has been learnt on this port. Maximum is one. Security violation is restrict. Show port security interface gigabit 104. No violations have occurred. So let's cause that to happen. PC6 IP config slash all is that. Let's do a renew rather. That should cause a violation. On the switch now, we can see that this command shows us that a violation took place. Security violation count is two. Maximum MAC address allowed is one. Total MAC addresses is one. Configured MAC address is one. The port is still enabled and it's still secure, but the violation counters are going up. So notice the difference. Interface is green, not red, even though we see violations. Three violations have occurred on this port. Port hasn't been shut down though because we are using restricted mode. This address is allowed on this port. It was manually configured. This address was learnt dynamically but added to the running configuration because of the sticky command. So notice the difference. With this method, you don't have to manually configure MAC addresses. This way you'd have to find out the MAC addresses of your devices and manually add them. Default mode is to shut the port down. Restrict doesn't shut the port down, but you do get logging information. Protect simply drops violating packets, but doesn't log that information. Here we're dropping violating frames, but logging that information. So here are three examples of how to set up port security. Next thing we need to do is increase the number of devices allowed on gigabit 101 to two. So show run 
This port by default only allows one MAC address. So let's say switch port, port security, maximum MAC addresses allowed is two. I'll shut the port down and no shut it to re-enable it. So show port security. Two MAC addresses are now allowed on this port. Currently none have been learnt. On that port, we haven't learnt any MAC addresses. So let's generate some traffic. IP config slash renew on PC1. On PC2, IP config slash renew. On the switch, show port security interface gigabit 101. We've now learnt about two MAC addresses. The last one that we learnt was this one. There have been no violations. So back on PC1, if I send a renew again, last MAC address learnt is now PC1, but again, there have been no violations. So show port security. Two MAC addresses have been learnt on this port out of a maximum of two. Show port security interface, gigabit 101 again, shows us that the port is up. And if we look at addresses, we've learnt about two addresses on gigabit 101. That, however, is not written to the running config. So those MAC addresses are not written here. If the switch rebooted, new devices could send traffic. But at this point, while the switch knows about those MAC addresses, if we change the MAC address of this PC to something like this, and then send a DHCP request, what we should see is that the port goes down, and there you go, it went down. Show port security address. We don't see those MAC addresses because the port has been shut down. Interface gigabit 101. Last MAC address learnt was this. It's a security violation. Port has been shut down. The problem with shutting a port down is that you have to manually go and shut and then no shut the port to re-enable it. Whereas if you use restricted mode, the port is not shut down, but violating traffic is dropped. You could use shutdown to force the users to, for instance, contact you to re-enable the port, and then you can ask them what happened and why they're plugging in devices into the network that they shouldn't. Whereas with restrict, you're simply blocking them. You're not having to manually go and re-enable ports. Okay, so how did you do? Were you able to configure port security in this lab? Do you understand all the different options in port security? You need to understand port security for the CCNA exam.